Hi, this video is a continuation of a conversation about the changing landscape of education with Peter Musser from Go Verba Noun. Click here or the link in the description below to watch part one of our discussion. Should we redo our intros? Hey everybody, it's me, Peter. Hey everybody, oh wait, no. <laughs> I, how did, yours is just, hi. I'm Meg. Oh yeah, 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 that's right, okay. <laughs> Okay. Hi. <laughs> I'm Meg. Better. <laughs> Those years of theater paid off. <laughs> okay, so I have a conundrum for you. Okay. And it has to do with what we were talking about earlier. Okay. Okay, so we were talking about, you know, using the internet and Wikipedia and all that for, you know, information, educational purposes. And... I had mentioned that, you know, while maybe I feel like I am good at discerning fact from opinion and, you mm -hmm. know, quality data from low quality data, uh, maybe not everyone is. And mm -hmm. so, how to do we me, teach that the skill? conundrum is, yeah, how do, yeah. We, how do we make that the widely accessible to the masses thing that is, is taught in education? Hmm. See, that's an excellent question. Yeah, and we can totally solve this problem in six minutes. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, we, my perspective, when I look at other kids, folks my age, mm -hmm. and folks who have grown up with access to the internet, not like my dad, who was already old when the internet came along. Mm -hmm. Love you, dad. Or like me. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it seems like it's a little bit more intuitive for somebody who's a little bit younger, just because they've been exposed to having so much information at the fingertips the entire time that they've been doing cognitive stuff. Right. It seems like maybe the exposure effect may have something... I mean, I'm making this up. This is the new thing. Peter's theory of the exposure effect. Okay. Where the more exposure you have to information, the more able you are to do something productive with it. Yeah. And, like, you can... There are certain skills you can teach. Like, when I was doing Intel stuff for the Navy, like, uh, I took a class on how to do competing... like. To measure arguments of competing hypotheses. Mm -hmm. um, so there are different ways like that to understand how to think, I guess you could say. These are like algorithms and heuristics, mm -hmm. right, that you're talking about. And I think that's a great approach because it's it's like procedural, you mm -hmm. know, and there's like methods and, and things like that. So that's something you can sort of take with you and go anywhere. And I think another thing is, is we couldn't, you sort of touched on this in a way, we could also give a little bit more like benefit of the doubt to the kids that are coming up and the you know the generation d like mm -hmm. the the na digital natives yeah so tell me what you envision for if you had your way what online learning would look like so if it was up to me i would say that you would have a group of people because it just seems in general small groups work better like five or six people and if you keep the same five or six people for a certain amount of time you get more familiar with them yeah um and then you would give the students a task and then just throw them to the wild give them the internet the sum total of all human knowledge mm -hmm. and maybe access to like what a, whatever database or tools you have like Khan Academy or something like that mm -hmm. and then you would have the teacher there to be a facilitator mm -hmm. like so if somebody has trouble the teacher would be there to recognize that, oh, this person's having trouble. Or if somebody's being left out, the teacher can be like, hey, Johnny, what do you think about this problem? Mm -hmm. And then that way the teacher can do circuits and you can effectively manage more students with one teacher because it's not the teacher that's doing the managing, it's the students that are managing themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the problem solving is a good way to teach lots of different things and lots of different ways of thinking mm -hmm. all at the same time. Yeah, and then... As opposed to the sort of rote... Mm -hmm. It's so weird because, like, you go and you look and see, you look at history mm -hmm. and you look at how different countries have been acting for, like, let's say the past 150 years. It was all, you know, they don't have the foresight, mm -hmm. like, yeah, that we have. But looking back, you know, at the very least, we could learn from their mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Right. Because it's not like anybody went into it being like, we're going to wreck this world or anything like that. They right. just, they didn't have the understanding of, say, climatology yes or international relations yes or things like that come here i'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> yes 
I would like to leave, you know, a, a better framework for her generation. Like, I don't really feel the need to leave a giant mess for Lily's generation and just be like, shrug. Well, I would say ultimately I'm hopeful. I'm always hopeful. Yeah. Um, just because you go and you look around and it's like Mr. Rogers says. Uh, whenever you have like some natural disaster, mm-hmm. just look at the TV, look at the news, and you'll always find somebody helping. Yeah. Um, and with like seven billion people on this earth, there are lots and lots of helpers. Yeah. The tricky part is helping them. Yes. Um, yeah, that's key. Yeah, because it's a lot easier to do something when you're not the only one trying to do it. Um, it just helps to to care. Yeah. But there will never, there will never be a shortage of people who care. So that's true. Like Lily will be okay. Yeah, I think. I mean, we're at an exciting time where I think that these things are all in such their infancy mm-hmm. that it's we're gonna look back and be like, yeah, it was just this rinky-dink little link, or you know, we're just yeah. gonna look back at how. But it's just at least it's a starting place, mm-hmm. right? And, mm-hmm. That's the way I see it. Yeah, we're starting from zero basically mm-hmm. with something like YouTube. Like nobody ever in the history of ever has done something like this because the technology didn't exist and we didn't have the convergence of factors and we didn't have such open access for everyone to have that kind of promulgation of ideas from everyone yeah and as as the technology progresses we all fall into this kind of lull this like oh this is nice this is this is the new normal Mm -hmm. but the new normal updates once every five years or doubles every five years Mm -hmm. Until we reach the singularity, and then, yeah. and then the In universe eats itself or something. Yeah, and then there will be no distinction between man and machine, and mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably not? still be around. I still have anything else to do that day. Mm-hmm. Right, right. <laughs> Might as well watch and see what happens. So this seems like a good yeah. uh, rounding out place. So, okay, so for we have to do, we have to do my sign. We did the openings, now we have to do my sign off. Which is the same incredulous look with with thanks for watching. Okay. So are you ready? Okay. Okay. Thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I love you.